Finding out what works and what doesn't, even, what, what do you give players choice with and what doesn't, I think, yeah, totally, but very even, important. But even Toscany demo that, that we developed in, you know, two weeks, yeah. you know, together, you know, based on the Toscany uh, environment that uh, we got from Oculus and we had the, the whole interface and, and the hands and all, it's still, you know, that's two weeks of work, that's yeah. nothing. We are releasing this source code soon, so mm -hmm. everybody can take it and take it to the next level. That's nothing to what needs to be done. We need to spend six months, a year, two years, and then you'll, you'll see the kind of experiences that people can have. Absolutely. I totally agree. Whole there's not going to be sickness, and there's not going to be issues as, 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 as Oculus makes the display and the latency you know, mm -hmm. uh, optimized. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Just, uh, beginning. Definitely. I totally agree with that, 100%. Uh, how am I for time? We're going to. Wanted. You can take a few more. Let's go. <laughs> um, what do you see as the next milestone, like as far as the kits are out there, people are talking, they're making stuff. But what's the next big milestone everybody's trying to like get to, or like get the next, you know, I guess ledge? Ooh. Um, I, I think you have to split that into hardware and software. Um, I think hardware, we're all depending on Oculus to get that next milestone. Uh, the positional tracking and display, I think, are the immediate ones. Um, where you get to the point where you're just totally emulating sight, and I think that's very exciting. For software, um, yeah, I think everyone's just kind of delving into different experiences and trying ideas right now, which is very interesting. I mean, I've tried so many different types of software and made a couple things on my own, and checked it out, and there's just, it's such a feeling of experimentation right now. Um, but I think the next thing I would, I would like to see, uh, as far as from the consumer's point of view, is the overall software experience. I think it should be a situation where if a consumer gets a rift, they should be able to unpackage everything, hook it up, put it on their head, and double click on something, and put it over their eyes and go. And right now, nothing is really like that. We don't have anything like that. We don't have a universal uh, like uh, calibration um, software uh, for IBD, we don't have anything that's universal for that. Um, some stuff you have to tweak and you're like, oh, oh, okay, oh, oh that's not right, oh. Um, and you're, you're doing these different things where uh, I think that would be the next big step, I think, to make it so we have some kind of universal gateway into your software experience uh, where the, per the normal person is going to want to double click on something, put on the Rift, and be able to do everything from inside the rift and not take it off. Uh, I think that's probably one of the biggest things. Uh, I think that's part of the reason why Proton Pulse is so fun, because you literally double click on Proton Pulse, you put it over and you don't even have to touch anything. You're like, yes, yeah, start, let's go. Um, and so I think that's a really compelling experience as opposed to spending like a half hour tweaking things and adjusting I and I files and uh, all that kind of thing. Um, Standards then. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So adjusting those standards and making that process so you, it would be great if you can set it once and then have that across all games you play. That's probably not very feasible, but that would be great if, if that could be, if that could happen. Yes. Not really a question, but I wanted to add on to what you're saying about your mom hanging out on the beach and your restaurant. Nice. And your restaurant should say. be one of the first things everyone <laughs> tries. It's, um, <laughs> Easily most immersive thing I've had. But the biggest moment for me so far at the Rift was someone on the Oculus forums, when they were talking about Dear Esther, spoke up and said, My mom is in the hospital. She's dying of cancer. Yes. She'd love to spend some time on the beach. Do you think that Dear Esther would work? Mm -hmm. And the consensus was, Not yet. Yeah. But I it will. It. Yeah. And this kind of thing. You know, if you make a game that's really fun and a thousand people play it, that'll make you really, really happy. But if you make these kinds of experiences for people who are having a hard time or have some sort of constraint, physical or financial or who knows what, when you start getting emails from like some kid who's bedridden, that will actually affect you a lot more personally, a lot more deeply than all the people telling you, hey, your game rocks. I've had little bits of that in my work and out of all the people that have played my games, the little stories about stuff like that, uh, that brings up the onions. Yeah, that tugs, <laughs> tugs at the heartstrings. That guy actually did, uh, he emailed me, and he's like, well, how real is it? You know, and I tried to kind of explain, hey, this is what they're dealing with, you know, in slow resolution, it's this and that, but hey, 
put your mom in there, maybe get a big fan and put her feet on some sand. <laughs> might, might be about halfway there, 75%. So I, I want to throw, add something onto that. So actually my girlfriend, Nana, who's working on the desk out there, so we can't thank her in person, but, uh, <laughs> but um, she's actually been, was talking about the idea of starting some kind of nonprofit to actually bring these experiences to people that are bedridden or you know, have some sort of illness. And, you know, I think there's, that can go really far in the future, but any, if anyone is interested in actually seriously wanting to actually you know, attempt to do that, then contact me or Nana and you know, let's, let's try to get something started, because I think that's an amazing idea. Like Make-A-Wish Foundation. But yeah, just something where we can, people that are stuck in a bed, and let's, you know, let's help them get out of the bed, at least in their head, for a little bit. Totally. Agree. To add on to that, me and Carl uh, actually recently went to Stanford's VHIL, uh, Virtual Human Interface Lab, um, and they were talking about <coughs> those types of interactions and the effects they have on people. Like, they had some really hokey thing where you flew around and missed and were to save a kid, but then they found out later that because of that act of heroism being in the status of a hero, that you actually end up being a nicer person and being more willing to volunteer after that experience. Um, same thing, they had a VR experience of chopping down a tree and then people used 20% less paper afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fascinating, but it's like, um, yeah, that type of thing, it definitely. I think we can't underestimate the ability of the having a really powerful emotional and psychological impact and uh, to help people in those types of positions, which would be, I mean, I think that's the headline that I think we want, right, for the mainstream press to pick up on. I think that's what we want. Um, let's All right, so let's, for, let's do yeah. um, one more question and then uh, we'll jump into uh, success. That sounds great. Excellent. One more. Oh, go. Uh, okay, this is kind of a, uh, a, a different topic, I guess, but in a lot of the science fiction culture, there's, a, there's this recurring theme of like, what happens if you die in VR or <laughs> get unplugged or whatever, but it's got to be tapping into some kind of uh, primitive fear of something, and I'm just wondering uh, what, what that might mean in reality and what you might do to mitigate that in terms of uh, cultural acceptance of ubiquitous VR. Mm, um, I think that's very interesting. Uh, one of the number one requests I get on my channel is play amnesia. Uh, <laughs> and I think a lot of the, the tricks that are used on a 2D surface to make you spooked out and make you scared are a little too intense in VR. Um, like I played Zombies on the Holodeck and was totally didn't know what I was doing at first. I'm like, oh, it's black and white. Oh, I got hands. What am I doing? I got totally freaked out. <laughs> like, ah, oh, ripped rip the rift off. Um, <laughs> like, I guess a sudden shift of like awareness of where you are or something like that. So. Ab absolutely. Um, I, I think it's, it's, it's pretty profound. Even, I think, with the guys at over the, the Project Holodeck over at USC, uh, the whole reason why they made zombies was because they're like, we want to take a person to a different reality totally uh, and just make everything in that universe consistent and see if that convinces you that you're somewhere else. And I would say that it's pretty effective. I mean, physically, I was kind of like, oh, this is going to be hokey. It's like a 40s film. This music's ridiculous. Lightning flashes. This is over the top. And Within about 30 seconds, I was feeling pretty creeped out. <laughs> Within a minute, I was sweating a little bit and my heart rate went up. So I mean, there were definitely physical consequences of what was happening in the game. And that was a result of, you know, there was not as much there to remind me that it's not a simulation because everything is consistent within the world. My hands on the body is consistent. Everything's black and white. The graphics look, uh, they, uh, consistent and stuff like that. So I think that's almost more important than like high resolution, I think, is to have consistency of the environment art-wise and stuff like that. I think that there will be physical consequences and I think doing the typical scare stuff might not be such a great idea. I would hate like to read about to someone having a heart attack. These people back in, yeah. back and forth between really real and not really real. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's, I think it's a really crazy transition. Like I said, I think there's a certain threshold of time after which you kind of forget your orientation in the real world totally. Uh, I think it's going to be different for every person depending on, you know, how immersed you get in your, your regular games probably or how, how much you feel about it. But um, 
yeah, they're definitely get physical consequences. I mean, you definitely have your heart rate go up when you lean over a building. I mean, there's, it definitely taps into that subconscious primal stuff, you know, as far as fear or looking at a certain viewpoint and your brain is like, no, um, and you know, and you, you jump anyway to try to overcome it. But I think some people would look over that and be like, whoa, that's, that's way too much, too intense. So yeah. All right. All right. All right. Thanks, Bruce. Stepped into this role of VR evangelist. He's our he's our Jaron Lanier. <laughs> it's an auspicious occasion. Um, having lived through the boom and bust of the '90s, uh, I didn't expect it to come back, honestly. And here it is. And uh, a lot of that is thanks to uh, Oculus and the Rift. And I'm not I'm not trying to pat uh, uh, six cents on the back, but the. Uh, the Hydra has a lot to do with this too. Putting your head and hands in the scene is, at least to my mind, the way it should be. Um, uh, so I'm here to, I'll do, this will be more of a show than tell today. I'm going to uh, show you uh, Make VR, which is an immersive CAD modeling system uh, that puts your head, again, your heads and hands in, a, in the scene that you're building around you. Uh, it is immersive in, in the classic sense. You're, you have a, a pair of tracked hands, you have a, a head, you look around. It was designed for immersion. Uh, we, have, we have versions that work just fine. You'll see uh, a 3D uh, uh, screen or just a flat screen works just almost as well, or it works well. But we started with full 3D and extracted uh, some of the uh, freedom of movement of the head um, to make these other versions. But it was designed to be self-contained. Your hands uh, are in the scene. You have no reason to, to uh, uh, leave the, the immersive experience. Um, and th I think there's been some, some uh, talk about uh, the possibility of uh, motion sickness in uh, uh, VR. Um, when I say that uh, Make VR was designed for immersion, it actually, the interface addresses any issue of moving your head through the scene without an action by you. Um, so uh, we've, I, I'm not sure that we designed it with exactly aiming at that, but it, it's turned out that way. So when you, uh, you and I'll, I'll be giving you a demo, and we'll show you a video as well, but when you grab the world and pull it around, you, you're like a driver in a car, not a passenger in a car. And so as I pull the world past me, I have no more expectations of when that world is in my hand than I do if I have a cup in my hand, that my head it should be feel like I'm, I'm in motion. You are pulling the world past you. You're not flying your viewpoint through the world. And it makes it so that you can spend hours and hours and hours building things in, in the scene. Not after you get used to it, but from, from the get-go. So um, I'm going to do a demo now, uh, and we want to get you guys inside. Um, so treat it as a training session, or you know, I'll run you through it, I'll show you the, the button presses, how it works. Uh, and there's a lot of people here. If, if, uh, if a quarter of you want to, we'll be here until 1 in the morning. So. Um, Pay attention, please. Thanks. <laughs> oh, okay. So, uh, Make VR is, uh, as, as the video told you, is a, an immersive CAD modeling system uh, that works with a pair of Razer Hydras. Uh, and the Oculus Rift, the left hand, and that means I can just reach out and grab objects in the scene, pass them from hand to hand, uh, grab it both hands and stretch and rotate. Uh, very, you know, very natural. You just don't really think about it. Uh, in addition, you know, I mentioned that it's a, uh, a CAD system. There's a CAD engine built into Make VR, so it's got this two-handed interface. What we call THI or the two-handed, the two-handed. Um, that 
allows me to designate an object as the cutter and the cut, and now 